Yes. Can you use that type of loan in like, say, like three different areas, say like in Indianapolis, Greenwood, and like Franklin, like all sure. the houses in three different places? They don't care as long as the assets are what you're seeking. So if you're buying, say, an investment building in Indy, one in Miami, and one in New York, you could mm -hmm. potentially get one $300 million loan. They would just, okay, so one asset sits here, one asset sits here. They don't really care on location, so to speak, as long as the assets that are the underlying value total what you're getting, then they're good with that. It does not necessarily have to be three houses on the same block or beside each other. It's just three properties that you're buying one loan on. All right. Now, can you do the same thing with businesses? Say you wanted to have like three different businesses. Could you have them all under a blanket loan? Um, my answer to you is I'm not a business lender. All right. <laughs> I would assume that if you can prove the value to the lender, any lender would make a loan because that's the business they're in. Uh, that's a very simplistic statement because proving that value of a business, that's all going to be you. But my assumption would be, sure, if you're buying three businesses and they truly value that 300000 you could get one loan and secure it with the assets or, and the three businesses, I would assume. Um, I don't know. I'm not a business lender. I do know that with properties, it's called a blanket loan. All right. Now, in your book, uh, on page 244, at the bottom, you've got a thing called open-ended loan. Across the page is another one called the home equity loan. These typically go together. One is open-ended. The other is what we call a HELOC, home equity line of credit. They are virtually the same kind of loan. They are based on, and typically the second lien, you've got a primary loan and then you've got this equity. So you borrow money against the equity. So it becomes a second, but here's the biggest difference typically between the two. An opened in loan means you've got approved for the right to use the money. You don't typically use it all at one shot. So you go out and you get an open end loan on your $100,000 worth of equity. And then you're walking through the mall one day and go, sweet, a new lawnmower, I wanna buy it. You would then write a check out of your open end loan and you only pay interest on the money you borrow and you don't start paying the interest until you borrow it. So you could get approved in January and never use the money until like July. You won't pay any interest because you haven't taken it out yet. So there's no interest on it and there's no repayment. Contrast that with a home equity line of credit. Typically you take it all out at one shot and you start making payments and accruing interest immediately. So you go and you get a $20,000 HELOC, home equity line of credit, you take all 20 grand out, you repair the house, you pay off a credit card, and you go around the trip world on a vacation cruise. All right. So they're virtually the same kind of mechanism. The difference is the opened in loan means you have the right to use it and you only use what you need and you don't start paying interest until you use it. Whereas typically the HELOC, all the money comes out at one time and you start paying interest and payments when you get it, all right? Now, at the top of the next page is this thing called a construction loan. A construction loan is a short term, usually like 12 months, high interest rate loan. Why is it a high interest rate? If the, more, if the market's like at 4%, construction may be at seven and a half, eight percent 8%. Why do you think it's a high interest rate loan? So the lender can make money? 
So the lender can make money. That's true. But why? Because why it's isn't it at 4% like the other low? There's more risk with construction because you can't do construction all year round. There's more risk. I agree with that. But you're kind of missing maybe the obvious. And it's so obvious, maybe that's why. There's no that's point. What? There is no point. Actually, what was I gonna say? Uh, well, like there is no way, like in like making money, like unless they charge a higher interest, right? Well, you guys are all correct in that. I mean, seven percent for one year is not very much money. But here's the main reason: there's no house. There is no collateral on that loan, right? It's a construction loan. So literally, you're borrowing money on the promise to build that house. Whereas if I go and get a regular home loan, remember we talked about it and the appraisal comes out to make sure the house is valued as collateral for your loan. In a construction loan, you point to it and all it is is a vacant farmland right now. So there's really no asset. That's why the risk is greater, like you guys said, because the risk is greater, the reward is more. So they charge more money for that. And that's why it's also a short term. There is no collateral yet, so to speak. Now, when you get approved for a home loan or a construction loan, they also do not hand you the $250,000. Because if they did, I would be in Barbados the next day daring them to come find me. All right. How it works is what they call a draw system. They leave the money in the bank and then you draw it out to pay off the construction as it's happening. So the, the builder is going to come to you and go, okay, Raymond, we poured the foundation and we set the frame up. Uh, we need to cover that 40 grand so I can pay my subs. And you go, okay. So we go to the bank, we draw out 40,000 and we pay those invoices for that 40 grand. Then the builder says, okay, well, now we put the drywall in and run the plumbing. I need another 40 grand. So you go back and you draw out 40 grand and pay the builder again. And that process can be many different ways. It could be every month. It could be only on three times. It's however the lender sets it up. But basically you draw money out to pay off the construction in parts. You're not handing the builder all 250. Oh, 40 grand, here's 40 grand. Another 20, here's 20, here's 60. The idea is when the builder shuts the door and it's done, you borrow the last dollar or draw the last dollar out of the bank, pay the guy off and ta-da, you now have a house and your 12 month loan that is high interest, you now refi it because you now have a house as an asset and you say, I wanna refi and balloon payment that hundred grand I borrowed or I think it was 250 in this example. And they say, okay, so they send an appraiser out and they go, well, that house is worth about 300 grand. You're like, yes, I want to refinance it, pay off my $250,000 construction loan and ta-da, I've got $50,000 now worth of equity. This is how builders make money, same concept. The builder builds a house for 100, borrows the money, builds it, sells it to you for 150 and pays off his underlying $100,000 uh, loan and keeps the 50 in profit. So a construction loan is short term, high interest rate. It is designed to be taken out or refinanced by a permanent loan when that loan comes due you balloon out that total amount of money. Cool? All right. 
So short-term high interest designed, a lot of banks in today's world, uh, Jamon, to go to speak to your point, a lot of banks won't do a construction loan if they don't get the 30-year loan. Because like you said, there's not a lot of money if I loan you 100 grand, at, even at 8%. I'm only gonna make eight grand, but if I loan it to you for 30 years, remember my form I showed you? That money doubles. So that's what they really want. So a lot of lenders now will do what they call this construction to perm loan. It's an automatic. You qualify for both of them at the same time and they loan you the construction for 12 months, 10% interest. And at the end of that 12 months, it automatically refinances into a 30 year fixed at three and a half percent so that the bank makes both the construction loan and the permanent loan. So a lot of times you will hear it called a one close. It's a construction to perm, one close. You qualify and you qualify for both of them at the first closing and you only have to close one time and it automatically refinances when it comes due. All right. Now on page 345 or 245 right below that, is this thing called a sale leaseback. A sale leaseback, this is a very common trick in the commercial world that is used by virtually every big commercially or publicly traded company. Matter of fact, it's easier to tell you who doesn't do this than who does do it. All right, so let's, let me explain it. You guys know where Chili's is? They're over at the Greenwood Park Mall. Burger King, you've heard of them? Pizza Hut, Home Depot. All of these companies don't own their buildings. Why would you want to own the building? Home Depot's not in the real estate game. They're in the selling lumber and nuts and bolts. So why spend $15 million to build a building that is just sitting there? So, go ahead. I'm pretty sure McDonald's actually does this. It's like they actually um, McDonald's do it like a franchise. Does, does not. McDonald's yeah. owns their properties. Yeah, so when they own it, they have to, don't they like franchise it out? And basically it's like a lease to like whoever buys that McDonald's and they're actually in the real estate and the franchise business at the same time? McDonald's buys the land and then leases it to the franchisor or the yeah. uh, the franchisee so that, yeah, McDonald's is collecting rent on the land and then they collect a percentage of the sales. It is unique, all right? Like I said, they are one that doesn't do this, so to speak. As a company, they, they own their properties. Home Depot is different. You got $15 million laying around. Where are you going to put it? You put it in, take your 15 million, and put it in the bank. What, what's the interest rate right now? Half a percent, maybe just make up a number. However, you go to Home Depot and go, Hey, I'll buy your building from you. And then you turn around and lease it back from me and pay me a monthly rate. Home Depot says, yeah, we'll do that all day. CVS, Walgreens, uh, you guys ever heard of Yum? Pepsi, used to be Pepsi, spun off. It's now Pizza Hut. Um, what, who owns it, what do they own? A&W, Pizza Hut. KFC. KFC. None of those people own their building. They sell it to Raymond, Raymond buys the building, and then KFC signs me a 30-year lease that pays $18,000 a month on my 15 million. And if I did the math, and we're not going to, you could figure the present value of money and realize that Home Depot is paying me 4% return on my 15 million guaranteed by the corporate Home Depot. So they're selling it to me 
and then leasing it back. Now it is a trick on their books because watch this. Home Depot has no mortgages. So there is no long-term debt on their book. What they have are long leases, which they put on their expense form. They still pay the same money, but now it's not a mortgage, it's a lease. And guess what they can do to a lease? You can write that off. So, no, so most of those big publicly traded companies don't own their buildings. You got 4 million, anywhere between two and four, buy a CVS. What CVS does is they borrow money, they build their building, and then they turn to one of you guys and go, hey, buy my building for 4 million, that'll pay our loan off, and then we'll sign a lease with you that pays you $2,700 a month. And when you do the math, you realize that that is a four or 5% return on your money, which is way better than the bank loan you. So it's called a sale leaseback. 